Hey, and welcome back to Escapades with Emma. I'm Emma, as you may have gathered, and today we are visiting one of my favorite places on Earth, Green Gables. Green Gables Heritage Place is the inspiration for the setting of the novel Anne of Green Gables, written by Lucy Maud Montgomery in 1905 and published in 1908. The novel is about Matthew and Marilla Cuthbert, an elderly unmarried brother and sister who live at Green Gables in the village of Avonlea. They decide to adopt a boy from an orphanage to help them with the farm work, which was getting to be too much for them. Due to a mix-up at the orphanage, a red-headed, freckled, imaginative, and intelligent little orphan girl named Anne Shirley was sent instead. The story chronicles Anne's adventures, mishaps, and sorrows as she wins over the Cuthberts and the village of Avonlea with her imagination, intelligence, and charm. Some of her more notable adventures are getting her bosom buddy Diana Berry drunk by mistaking red currant wine for raspberry cordial, or losing her temper after Gilbert Blythe teases her for her red hair by pulling her braids and calling her carrots, which led to her breaking her slate over his head. This is one of the places that you can enter for free this year with your handy dandy Parks Canada Pass for the Canada 150. This was a site that was owned by Lucy Mom Montgomery's cousins, the McNeils. Now, um, she lived just across these woods, which are also known as the Haunted Wood. And she'd come only to play with some cousins who were over here. And um, whenever she decided to write Anne of Green Gables, she used this place as the inspiration for the setting of the novel. It actually appeared quite different. It was just whitewashed as a house. But she used her imagination as Anne would have. And uh, amalgamated a lot of the things that she loved from this Cavendish area to make the fictitious town of Avonlea. This book is famous the world over. If you haven't heard of it, where have you been? There are several adaptations that are well known, including the 1980s adaptation that was uh, filmed in Oxbridge, Ontario um, in the 1980s starring Megan Fo or Megan Follows. Um, and there's currently a new one uh, that has just come out, I believe, on the CBC. So, anyway, welcome to Green Gables. Come inside with me. So, welcome to the parlor. Okay, so the parlor was where you would have fancy company. It had a fireplace, um, but it's also where you'd have your fancy furniture, so the horsehair couch behind me. So, um, also on the subject of hair, just right here, this is a wreath made of human hair. <laughs> Sounds really gross, but it was actually somewhat common. And the ivy wallpaper and carpet. All of the things in this in this house have been curated to resemble what was described in the novel by Lucy Maud Montgomery. But details were not overlooked. They actually looked into what would have been available to people at that time in this area to get in terms of wallpaper and carpet and those sorts of things, and that's what's here. So, in 1997, there was a major redevelopment where the barns were built. It was the same year that the fixed lake was built. And in the spring, just about this time of year, there was a fire at the Green Gables house in the middle of the night. Luckily, there was someone out walking their dog, got in contact with the volunteer police or volunteer firefighters in the area who came and saved the majority of the house. But this room is where the fire had began. When it gets to be really hot and humid, at least when I worked here seven years ago, you'd actually still be able to smell some of the smoke. Now coming out of here, you can kind of still tell the floors have probably been refinished, but here you can tell some of the scabbing and some of the remnants from the heat. And then again, when you look at the hall tree, the bubbled mirror is also a remnant of that fire. The kitchen, um, when the house was originally built, was the entire home. It was a house for seven people, was it? Yeah, seven people. So there was a sleeping loft up top, and then just the main kitchen area build on as your family required and as your, um, I guess, wealth would allow. So you have your dairy porch behind me here where you do your messier chores. There's a door out to the well. 
down to the cellar. There would have been a root cellar down there. So everyone asks to see the raspberry cordial. The pantry, which is just a normal pantry. The chimney. Why doesn't it go all the way to the ground? We, brick was really, really expensive here. It was hard to come by. We don't naturally have rock in Prince Edward Island, so you use what you do have on hand, which at the time was a lot of wood, and you'd use the shipbuilding skills to hold up this chimney. Attached to it, we have the new Waterloo number two, a very uh, fancy little stove. This portion is its oven. It's actually set up right now to be smoking. You'd have a sleeve that would go in and seal it. There's a door on either end. You could peek right through, and it can be used as an oven. Hold open a little bit the door to change the temperature. That sort of thing. Warming area. And a beautiful inscription. So of course, here we have Anne Shirley's room. You have apple blossom print wallpaper, her dress is laid out, her carpet bag. And for those of you familiar with the story, you might recall Anne wasn't fond of being called carrots by a certain Gilbert Blythe and broke a slate over his head. Here we have a guest room. Now, Marilla Cuthbert's room. Now, Marilla was a very classy lady. Everything's kept just so. And then here we have the sewing room. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, this thing, people don't often know what it's for, but it is used to hold yarn while you ball it. So you can put a spool of yarn once you take it from here. You put it on there, take that in your fingers, you place it over this, and the bottom here can rotate so that you can make your balls of yarn. And this would have been where the farmhand would have slept. And this is where they also have the cheese boxes. Down the back. Back entrance, which probably would have been used mainly as their main entrance and lead room. Uh, directly into the kitchen, as you can see. You know, fiction. <laughs> Behind me, you can kind of see uh, the Green Gables golf course that surrounds the Green Gables site. So, what used to be the farmland is now made into a golf course. Walking down Lover's Lane, you can see why. She would call it that, even though it was a cow path. <laughs> Here's the part that's under construction. Looks like it's coming along really nicely. I tried to find an adorable baby fox that's been hiding under this all day. It keeps surfacing and then going back. So, wish me luck. Thank you for watching. If you know someone who might like this video, please share it. If you want some more details about the site, the author, or tips for visiting the site, please see the description below for a link to my blog.